everybody, we are back. Well, I'm back here with Caitlin, the wonderful trampoline jumper. And we're just going to pull up some of the questions from the Facebook group and chat about them. We haven't talked about any of this. So three of the questions are kind of similar. So I'm going to read those really quick and then, then we'll do the other two. So one was tips for working with aggressive students, never having dealt with being hit, kicked a bit. However, I'm dealing with this this year. Extra breaks and consequences don't seem to be working, so on. So that was one. And then I have a kindergarten student in my autism class who throw things, throws things all day long. We removed or locked up all the toys, so he started throwing books and boxes of tissues. <laughs> I love that. I don't love it, but it's funny. And then another one was I have an autistic pre-K student that has never been aggressive with staff or peers until this week. He's nonverbal when he doesn't get what he wants or has to clean up and he starts scratching staff's faces, pushing peers and kicking. I cannot determine what caused the escalation in aggressive behavior. So what's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear those? Okay, so I'm thinking of just the first one, but they're all sort of not the same thing, but there's a behavior, we don't know what's causing it. And then despite environmental modifications, it's like whack-a-mole, right? So they're throwing this thing, we took away that thing, they're throwing other things. So my first thought is like, I totally get wanting to arrange the environment, but I talk to my teachers about this sometimes where, of course, we want to arrange the environment for success. But at the same time, like sometimes there's a, a thought that's like, oh, this is happening. Let's move that away. Or this is happening. Let's push that aside. Like if they can't relinquish the iPad, let's hide the iPad. And sometimes that works. And sometimes we can do that temporarily, but sometimes we're kind of just avoiding the real issue, right? So we're not solving any problems by just putting these kids in a bubble where there's nothing around them. Like we can't remove everything they can throw. I would want to know what's happening right before he's throwing things, what's happening after he's throwing things. I mean, I've definitely been in classrooms where after a student throws, there's a huge reaction, I'm not saying that's happening here. But, you know, if that is, even if it's not from you, maybe one of your staff members always says this key phrase that the kid, you know, looks at and kind of grins, or maybe right before, is he silly? Is he frustrated? You know, data collection could certainly help with that. What are your first thoughts, Audra? Uh, the one I thought about, the one that was talking about who throws all things all day long, we move things and he started throwing books or boxes. It reminded me of a student we had who was um, a destroyer of objects. So everything he got his hands on became mush. And he went through extension cords and, you know, I mean, it was just everything, everything he put his hands on, he couldn't help but destroy. So it, it would be different if we're talking about this is a behavior of control or something or something like that, or is this a sensory need of a behavior, which is what I was dealing with this other student, which kind of makes me think of that one. And in that case, what we did was we created a, we used blue tape in the area of his house. It was a home setting. And we create, we collected stuff that he liked to get his hands on and we put it there. And so whenever he started, and you can start to see those little precursors happen, we would guide him to that area where he could do it. Right. And so we had, you know, we had a bunch of paper, we had old computers, anything that he wanted to tinker with and destroy. And it was isolated to that one spot. And as we sort of shaped his need and filled that, when he was out of that space, he learned that that was not okay because whenever he started the behaviors, again, we redirected him to that spot. And so eventually he learned the difference between where he can and where he can't do that. So I don't know if that's what's going on, but that's the first thing I thought about. I just to piggyback off that, even I love that because you're teaching him like stimulus control, like you can do it here, you can't do it there. And even if the function or the need is not sensory, it reminds me of a guy I have now who throws and rips and breaks things because he's very angry because he doesn't get his way. It's like restricted access, you could say, but similar concept like we have a bunch of stuffed animals in our office and so we'll guide him to like the most bare part of the office and anything in there is fair game and it might not always look pretty like he might be like flinging the stuffed animals to the ground or like ripping the scrap paper and stomping on it but that's actually appropriate I, i'm teaching him to do that rather than like trash the office so to speak so just kind of finding those functionally equivalent replacements to offer yep. them yeah, and I've done that a lot of times. Like you, you can't kick me, but you can kick the beanbag all you want. I mean, you can go at it. In fact, sometimes I found myself, I'll do it with them, you know, because yeah, you're trying to channel yeah. that energy. And man, let me see, see, let, let's see who can hit it harder. You know, yeah. let's see who can make it go further, you know, whatever it is. So, you know, trying to channel that need because it's it's not something a lot of these behaviors you're talking about, it's not something you can just stop. You know, they they need to get it out somehow. And they're if if you don't help channel it, they're gonna channel it somewhere. 
So the next question was, I have a four-year-old who engages in self-injurious behavior anytime he's redirected or corrected, a head banging and hits his head with his hand and it's getting more intense. What are your thoughts about self-injurious behavior? And so we were talking about making sure, is it some type of SIB that, you know, certainly looking for protective equipment if we can, like we use a lot of like pillows and mats in my school, like the comfy corners, um, even if the learner is not even close to independently accessing them. I think that's like a hard part for sometimes for staff to understand, like you telling them to just use this instead of that is certainly not going to work, but it's a process. It's a skill over time, maybe for them to learn to hit this instead of that. But also the first part of that was when they were saying when they're corrected or redirected, right? Mm -hmm. So that makes me think that there is a potential for maybe some teaching there where you could start some type of shaping program. And I've done this with a couple learners where I'll say, write your name. And then maybe they start to write off the paper and I'll say, no, don't write there, write there. And in that millisecond, I'm like giving them an m, &M. like nice job taking my feedback and I'm teaching them like, it's okay. I'm pairing that feedback with something good instead of clearly they're having a real issue with being corrected, right? The thing that came to my mind when it said it's getting more intense is I wonder if she's going through an extinction burst, you know, mm -hmm. if they're Im implementing procedures, they may not know that, that that's what they're doing, that, that they're getting an increase of behavior before they're going to get the decrease. So it may be if they feel confident that he's safe, like I think of several learners I've had who do engage in this, you know, self-injurious behavior, but it's not unsafe behavior. So if you're okay. confident it's not unsafe, then it's something maybe you can give it a little bit of time and be consistent and see if it right. decreases with time. Of course, if it's unsafe, I mean, I remember waiting out kids, especially in preschool, who throw themselves on the ground and bang their head on the ground. But it's obvious it's like, okay, this is the toddler tantrum type look and right. not a serious, you know, where I've had adults who do engage in true SIV where we had to intervene. But those little ones who are just throwing that tantrum, I'm like, I can wait here all day. You know, it's okay. Yeah. And, and I have, I have the admin right. walking by and I'm like, it's okay. I got this. <laughs> With both of them, just, you know, what kind of reinforcement are we providing for not doing these behaviors? What kind of reinforcement are we providing for accepting the teaching of those skills? Mm -hmm. Well, some of the things she mentions is like when saying walking feet or color on paper. And then I think, well, can you engage with the student in doing those in such a way that it becomes a fun game? It's like, okay, uh -huh. let's see who can go the slowest or right. you know, maybe you're coloring too. And you're like, okay, here we go right here. You know, is how can you engage with right. the student rather than just being that authoritative do this? Yeah. You know? And then the last one was dealing with admin. And this all says dealing with admin is hard <laughs> as I have six sites. <laughs> so Caitlin, how do you deal with admin? Uh. It's a loaded question. No, I mean, you could, uh, yeah, I, I guess I'd want more specifics maybe, but dealing with admin can be tricky because dealing with anyone can be tricky, especially if someone is coming into something with a different perspective than you. So I think just like, just like we do with our staff and our teachers, building those relationships is key because anyone just walking into an admin's office with like a clipboard full of data is, you know, out of left field maybe, and you don't have that that foundation of a relationship yet is might not be well received, but I think just sitting it down and talking to them about like what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis and also like what your goals are trying to find common ground. I mean, if you're talking about an admin who's coming up and saying, Hey, don't do it this way, do it that way. Then it's like, is our lines of communication open? Like, are you able to meet with them? Like when you're not working with students, so it's more calm and kind of give them that perspective that you are so knowledgeable in. That was exactly what I was going to mention. It's like, do you have a time where you can build that relationship with each of the admin? If you have six sites and you have six, you know, main admin plus all the other ones you have, can you schedule yeah. a 15 minute, you know, check-in every week yeah. or something just, and, and go in with it. Like, how can I help you this? I'm here yeah. to help you and your site. What is it you need most here? How can I be of most support to you and maybe go in uh, as early as possible in the year to gain those relationships so that you can build that together? Yeah, that's a good point. Because I remember when I first started, it was like, I had kind of a one track mind just coming from my background and knowing from my special ed department, like what I was there to do. 
but I wasn't always taking into account, you know, the principal of the building's goals or the vice principal's goals or mm -hmm. seeing how my goals like fit into theirs. Mm -hmm. And I think the last thing I would say is, are you only calling them in when there's a crisis? Can you have them come in and see something awesome going on in the classroom or something to build up a positive relationship with the, the admin and the students as well as you? So, Oh, that's a very good point. Yeah. Show off like everyone's progress. Yeah. Have them walk by the ad, the principal's office with something they created, <laughs> the little parade yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So those are our thoughts with this week. Ask questions and not specific with student information, certainly, but just give us even like maybe example scenarios with in broad context or something like that. If it's awesome. stuff we haven't answered yet. Very good. We'll do it again.